Up next on Line TV. James Stafford has a story on robotics about the Ozark Mountain Brawl competition. Eric and Curtis have a new episode of Discog about musical artist David Bowie. And me, Brock Smith, with the crazy ending to our win against Pine Bluff. All that and more, Lion TV starts now. Good morning, Cersei Hi, Welcome back to another episode of Line TV. I'm Luke Pruitt. And I'm Skylar Thomas. We hope you had a great four-day week in Cersei. Now let's get straight into the, those student announcements. This year, the Fellowship of Christian Athletes is holding Fields of Faith tonight. It will be held at the Cersei Lions football stadium. The tailgating will start at 5 p.m. and will include hot dogs, chips, and a drink, along with games until the kickoff at 6 p.m. This group encourages you to join them and bring your friends to help spread the good word of Jesus. Students, it's not too late to join FBLA. The dues are only $20. For more information, you can see Mr. Stewart or Ms. McSpadden. Please don't miss out on this opportunity. Make sure you have your bus tag for riding the bus and for use at school. Mr. Eubanks will begin giving detention for students who do not use their bus tag more than one day a week. Forgetting it one day is not a real big deal, but for those who do not bring it two or more days in a week will serve lunch detention. This started being enforced yesterday, and this is the only warning they're giving. Arkansas Tech University Academic Scholarships is now posted. Priority scholarships deadline is December 1st. Final deadline is February 1st. Last ACT and SAT scores accepted are from December exams. See the counselor's office for more information. Hey, I've been thinking about joining robotics, but I haven't had the time to explore its full potential. Well, lucky for you, James Stafford has a story about our very own robotics team. The Sissy Robotics team is a part of the first robotics competition organization that is mainly held in the spring. But what does this team do in the meantime? Elda Harding, the Ozark Mountain Brawl is an off-season competition that introduces new robotics members to a small look at what this season looks like. I think we did fairly decent. We made it to the third bracket, I believe. Uh, we didn't do quite as well because our robot kind of malfunctioned and had some issues, but I, I'd say we did pretty well from what I saw. The last year's robot was designed to play a game called Crescendo. Um, it was a music themed game in which we picked up foam rings called notes and we scored them into high goals and then we climbed from a chain. Uh, last year's robot was really well designed. Uh, we could pick up the notes off the floor, score them really well, and we were very good in our auto. So in the auto routine, it's where the robot does the certain parts of the game on its own without the driver controlling it. And uh, at the second competition we went to in Alabama, we had one of the best auto routines of the field of 55 robots. There are many jobs that are needed for robotics that isn't just about the robot. My part was to be a scout, which is just recruiting others for our alliance or our team, um, just viewing others and writing down their stats on a sheet and then putting it into a spreadsheet and then getting all the info out of that that we need. We can delegate duties to sub-teams so we can kind of divide and conquer. My favorite thing to do so far is learn learning how to like fundraise and like sponsor for people uh, just to make sure that we can have a good robot for next year and have all the things that we need making sure that we're able to have it. With all these interesting attributes taken into account how does somebody join the team? This is my first year in robotics. I just decided I would like to join. I, after Mr. Muse was recruiting us, I just decided I wanted to join. To join the team, we meet on Tuesdays in the fall. We will continue to meet throughout the rest of the fall on every other Tuesday. And then in the spring when our season kicks off, we meet two times a week. If you're interested in joining, you can come see me personally and I can give you all the information you need. With the Ozark Mountain Brawl finished, we are excited to see how the robotics team competes in the 2025 first robotics competition named Reefscape in the spring. Now let's send it back to the news desk. Thanks James. Robotics seems like it could be really fun, but I want to know more about what's going on in local news. Three puppies, less than a week old, were abandoned last week inside of a Dollar General market dumpster, according to Arkansas authorities. The Gentry Police Department said in a Facebook post last Wednesday morning that an employee found the puppies in freezing weather. Gentry and some neighboring areas saw temperatures dip to the low 30s late Tuesday night into Wednesday. 
Sean Diddy Combs is facing a new wave of sexual assault lawsuits this week, with seven new complaints filed against the music mogul in New York courts Monday morning. The recent delusion of lawsuits includes six filed last week, all by a team of lawyers led by Texas attorney Tony Busby, who promised up to 120 lawsuits in total over the time, which have all been submitted anonymously and accused Combs of a range of sexual abuses. Most of the complaints were alleged that they were judged before being assaulted, but these lawsuits stand out for another reason. The majority have been filed by men. Eight of 13 most recent complaints come from male accusers, including two who say they were minors at the time of the alleged assaults. Several accusers claim they were working for and had worked for the superstar producer prior to the encounter that they are suing over. Four people were killed, including a child, when a helicopter crashed into a radio tower in a residential area in Houston on Sunday, according to Houston officials. It was said an, a Robinson R-44 helicopter was flying from Ellington Airport when it struck a radio tower around 8 p.m. on Sunday. The cause of the helicopter crash is being investigated by the National Transportation Safety Board, Federal Aviation Administration, and local fire and police officials. The NSTB confirmed on Monday evening that the four people on board the helicopter were killed and that there was a fire after the crash as well. I really like this cold and refreshing weather. What about you? It's the same with me. So let's send it over to Samuel Stubbs to see if it keeps up. Good morning, Cersei. I'm Samuel Stubbs, here to bring you all your weather updates for the week. Today, it's a high of 85, partly sunny outside, only an 8% chance of rain. Winds out of the west at 10 miles an hour, humidity at 61%, and your sun rose at 7.20 a.m. On to tonight. Partly cloudy tonight, a low of 55, only a 16% chance of rain. Winds west-northwest at 4 miles an hour, humidity at 87% and your sun will set at 621 p.m. On to the Almanac, high of 73 this last week for an average low of 50. There has been no rain in the month of October. On to the Fivecast. Tomorrow, Thursday, high of 85, low of 57, only a 1% chance of rain. Sunny weather all week continues on Friday, high of 87, low of 61, 3% chance of rain. On Saturday, a high of 77, Low of 52 and a 15% chance of rain. Sunday, high of 72, low of 53, 18% chance of rain. And on Monday, a high of 82, low of 60, and only a 4% chance of rain. Guys, it turned to fall about a month ago. I don't guess Arkansas got the memo. It usually never does. Thanks, Sam. But do you know what's for lunch today? I do. Today, we're going to be having a beef hot dog, classic cheese pizza, classic cheeseburger, fajita marinated chicken, ham and Swiss cheese sub, crisp Fuji apple, and milk. That sounds delicious. Please make sure to thank our amazing lunch ladies. You, you know, Luke, I've been hearing a lot of people talk about David Bowie, and I hate to say it, but I don't know who he is. Uh, same here, but I do know that Eric Crowley and Curtis Stevens have a story about him. What's up, Cersei? Hi, it's Curtis Stevens. And Eric Crowley. And get ready for another exciting episode of Discography. <laughs> For today's episode, we'll be talking about one of the most influential musicians of the 20th century, David Bowie. Bowie developed an interest in music from an early age. He studied art and music and design before embarking on a professional career as a musician in 1963. After uneven commercial success in the late 1970s, Bowie had three number one hits. The 1980 single Ashes to Ashes, its album Scary Monsters, and Under Pressure. Throughout the 1990s and 2000s, Bowie continued to experiment with musical styles including industrial and jungle. Now onto his albums. The first album by David Bowie was his first self-titled album released in 1967. The album contains primarily music hall and Baroque pop influence. Around this time during concert tours, Bowie was building one of his most popular alter egos, a character named Ziggy Stardust. Ziggy Stardust is considered Bowie's best album and a defining album for the glam rock genre. Starman is one of the songs you're probably most familiar with. It was there in Germany that Bowie would record his fir the first of his Berlin trilogy, starting with Low. This was fueled by Bowie collaborating with Brian Eno, an ambient musician. Bowie expanded upon the styles of Low with Heroes in 1977. Rounding out the Berlin trilogy, it was Lodger in 1979. Following this, Bowie released Scary Monsters and Super Creeps in 1980 and his most successful album, Just Dance, in 1983. Black Tie White Noise, re released in 1993, marked a return to critical praise. The 1995 Outside marked Bowie returning to storytelling on his album. Reality was released in 2003 and after suffering from a blocked artery on, on tour in 2004, Bowie retreated from public life. 
He released his last album, Black Star, two days before dying of liver cancer in January 10th of 2016. May this wonderful le legend rest in peace. Yeah. But I'm also curious to what our folks here at SHS think of him. Well, let's go around and ask them. What is your favorite David Bowie song? Magic Dance from the Labyrinth. Starman. Oh, most definitely Under Pressure. Modern Love. <laughs> well, Cersei, that wraps up another episode of Discography. This is Eric Crowley signing off. And Curtis Stevens, now sending it back to the news desk. Peace out! Thanks, Eric and Curtis. Yeah, I'm glad they went around helping people remember old legends. Moving on, Brock Smith has some sports updates for us. Happy Wednesday, Cersei. I hope you all enjoyed your long weekend. Now let's head into some sports updates. In local sports, the SHA's football team took on Pine Bluff Zebras at home this past Friday, where things were looking great for the Lions during the first half. Cersei would wait until the fourth quarter to respond with 25 straight unanswered points to come back in a phenomenal way to win the game 28-21. Their next game will be this Friday on the road, where they will take on Joe T. Robinson. The SHS volleyball team took on Batesville this weekend, where the Lions would outplace the Pioneers in the first set. Batesville would then respond by winning three sets, straight as Cersei falls short 1-3. Their next game will be this Thursday at home against Marion. This will also be senior night, so please make sure to come out and support the Lady Lions. Shredden Herendez and Avery Trainum won the Tennis State Tournament last week in girls doubles, and they hadn't stopped there, as now they advance to the meet of champions, and so far they defeated the two A state champions from Riverside in straight sets, 6-3 and 7-5, in the quarterfinals. Now they will look look to face the four A champions at Elkins High School to advance the finals and no Lion in over 20 years has made it that far, so we wish them luck. Now, moving on to national sports, in the MLB playoffs, the World Series is now set between two teams, which include first, the LA Dodgers, after defeating the Mets in their final game, 10-5, to win their series, 4-2, and the Yankees, after defeating the Guardians in their final game of their series, 5-2, to win out 4-1. These two teams are set to face one another this Friday in Game 1. In the WNBA playoffs, New York Liberty, as well as the Minnesota Lynx, had their final game this past Sunday, where it head into overtime, and during the period, New York would hold the Lynx to only two points to win the game, as well as the series, 3-2 crowning themselves as the 2024 WNBA champions. During week eight of college football, eighth-ranked Miami took on Louisville in what may be called a shootout between both teams, with both quarterbacks throwing for over 300 plus yards and four touchdowns each, but in the end, it would once again be Miami picking up another win, 52-45, to to remain undefeated. Tennessee took on Alabama at home and multiple turnovers would happen throughout the game, causing it to be a roller coaster of emotions for fans and Dylan Samson for Tennessee, who would have 26 carries and 139 yards and two touchdowns in the game. And it would end with Melrose would throw an interception to seal the game, giving the Volunteers the win. 24 to 17. Texas took on Georgia at home in a physical brawl between the two, and before the game, lots of fans and analytics picked Texas to win, and Georgia would show them otherwise by outpacing the Longhorns by going up 23-0 at the third, at half, forcing Texas to come back, and the Bulldogs would hold out, picking up the win, knocking out the number one ranked team. 30 to 15. In the NFL, there would be a couple of close calls, which include the Lions traveling to Minnesota to take on the Vikings. And at the end of the game, Jake Bates would force would be uh, would force to make a 44-yard field goal, in which he did, giving the Lions the win, 31 to 29. The Cardinals took on the Chargers at home, where once again the game would go down to a field goal at the end. And this time, it would be Chad Ryland who would make the 32-yard field goal, giving the Cardinals win. 17 to 15. The Packers took on the Texans at home where they would end the fourth. The Texans would kick a field goal to regain their lead 22 to 21, forcing Green Bay to march down the field with a minute and 44 seconds left on the clock. And they would kick a field goal of their own to seal the game and win home 24 to 22. Well, seriously, that's all the sports updates I have for you now. Now let's send it back to the news desk. Thanks for all the sports updates, Brock. Today, for those of you who don't know, is Skylar's last day at Line TV. You've been a really great member, and we're all sad to see you go. You will be missed. Thanks. I'm going to see you guys, too. Unfortunately, we've run out of time for today, Cersei. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel at Cersei High Lion TV. And follow us on X at Lion TV, Instagram at Cersei Lion TV, and on Facebook at Cersei High Lion TV. Signing off for the very last time, I'm Skylar Thomas. 
And I'm Luke Pruitt. See you next time, Cersei.